What about Rex Ryan being the new defensive coordinator? Uh, he's an elite DC. Why hasn't his name been brought up? Because, because here's the thing. When Kyle Shanahan talks about defense, he always sound. talks about sound scheme. Rex sound. Ryan plays a lot of unconventional defenses and they work right where you're blitzing a bunch of people from a bunch of different spots. But Kyle Shanahan looks at it and says, that's why he says when he plays a guy that blitzes a lot, he says like when they played Wink Martindale, Versus Baltimore, he said they're going to get they're going to get us on some calls, but we're also going to have a lot of opportunities to hit explosives. The reason he likes the Seattle he liked the Seattle scheme and he wanted that defense is because he thought it was a really sound defense from a technical standpoint, where they had a scheme that they could fall back on. That's why sound I- means conservative. Uh, it, it means we're going to rush four and play seven in coverage. It's tough. It's tough to find openings against seven in coverage if that front four is a good pass rush. When you when you blitz people, then there's all kind of openings and one on ones, and for a guy like Kyle Shanahan to exploit if there's protection in time, right? And it's also it also means hey, we're gonna start with this. We're gonna start with one type of front that we're gonna be really good at playing, and we're gonna have this base thing for a defense that's base personnel, base scheme that's gonna be easy to teach. It's gonna be translatable, and it's gonna be something when we're gonna be really good at playing first. It all starts but again. There. If you're an aggressive coordinator and you want to blitz. You don't spend all your uh, resources on pass rushers because you're you buy, manufacturing you pressure. Right. You you're spending corners. your resources on Darrell Revis because you need a guy who can hold up man to man when you play. And him. Antonio Cromartie, right? Right, exactly. So if the, I mean the Niners just aren't built that way. They got Bosa, yeah. You know, they got Armstead, all their Ball- and yeah. I mean, so no, uh, they would be more probably interested in D'Amico Ryan's or Gus Bradley. Although from the from from Bradley's perspective, or from Salah's perspective, I think they they might work together. That's the way I would say it. What Raheem Morris, right? Raheem Morris, Morris, let's go. Raheem Morris, yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, Dan Quinn is the new DC for the Cowgirls. Yeah, yeah. bad hire. Bad hire. <laughs> they bad hire. Just- you know, at some point, you know, I, I don't think Mike Nolan is good. I hate Mike Nolan. I'm going to say that right now. I really, really dislike him. Mike thought, Nolan. You don't, you don't hate him. I mean, he's, he's, he's actually – I dislike what he did to the 49ers. Six-year-old me is still upset and crying when they used to lose games and stuff. Okay, fair enough. Wearing his suit. Old, old he, old was, he was wearing his suit. I couldn't I couldn't look for a reason. But I wear you know, at some point – well, Mike Nolan was wearing his suit as a coach and all that. But at some point, you got to look yourself – if you're Jerry Jones and Steven Jones and look at the mirror and say, Mike Nolan didn't give Jalen Smith that contract. You gave Jalen Smith that contract and Jalen Smith isn't that good. Mike Nolan didn't decide to pay Demarcus Lawrence like he's Miles Garrett and Joey Bosa. You decided to pay him like he's Miles Garrett or Joey Bosa and he doesn't impact the game like those guys do. So and it's like you give him oh, not. Oh, Mike Nolan defense. didn't hire Mike Nolan. Mike McCarthy did. The idea right, right. that they In could theory, just put that all on Nolan, they should have fired McCarthy happens with the Dallas Cowboys right is that in theory their talent becomes good because if you're a reasonably good Dallas Cowboy you make the Pro Bowl the media is all talking about you ESPN does like seven different segments about the breakout season you're having you get overpaid and now because narratives don't change everybody's set in their mind Jalen Smith is a good football player they have it set in their mind this guy is very good so whatever happens, however bad that guy plays, it's always the coach's fault, right? This is what Jason Jason Garrett fell on this sword for years. There were players that were mighty overrated who made a bunch of Pro Bowls when they shouldn't didn't deserve to make it because they were Dallas Cowboys. And Jason Garrett, and now Jason Garrett, you're only going eight and eight. Well, these guys aren't as good as you think they are. They're really yeah. not. It's not just Jason Garrett. Jason Garrett is not the best head coach. We all agree there. But the players aren't also as good as people make them out to be. And, you know, it's an unfortunate reality. Jones but- son picked the players. That's the problem. Right. So because of that, because of that, right, they market the players to be the stars. They market the players to be better than they are. And the coaches constantly get blamed for bad personnel decisions.